Hello friends, welcome back. As you know, from the last two videos, we have started learning of data analysis in Excel. That means we are going to use the Excel to perform the data analysis. Now, as a part of it, in the first video, we had seen how we can set up the data analysis option into the Microsoft Excel. And into the second video, we had seen one way ANOVA with the help of practical example. We had also seen how we can use the box plot to represent our results into the graphical manner. As a continuation of it, we are going to learn how to perform the two-way ANOVA in Microsoft Excel with the help of practical example. I am also going to explain you how we can use the box plot to represent our results into the graphical manner. So let's begin to learn this important tool with the help of practical example. Before to start the procedure to perform two-way ANOVA in Microsoft Excel, let's first understand what is this two-way ANOVA and why it is called as a two-way ANOVA. This analysis tool is useful when Data can be classified along two different dimensions. That means we are having two factors to perform the data analysis. In other words, we can say we are going to use two factors to check whether there is a significant difference between their means or not. This two-way ANOVA is also called as analysis of means as more than one factor is considered in this analysis. For example, a study compared experienced and inexperienced drivers on three different types of roads. We can say the roads are first class, second class and third. In this example, we are going to learn two important factors. One is experience of the drivers and second one is road conditions. A tester recorded the number of steering corrections each driver made on each type of road. The response variable here is the number of corrects. The tester has collected data in three columns. The first one is what is the experience of the drivers? What is the road condition? And third one is what are the number of corrections the driver has done? As our data consists two different factors, we need to use two-way ANOVA. This is also called as ANOVA two-factor. We also have a data for multiple observations for the combination of these two factors. That means we need to select an option for ANOVA two factors with replication. If you can notice, here is a word with replication. That means we are going to repeat the experiments for the same number of combinations. After understanding of what is a two-way ANOVA, why it is called as a two-way ANOVA, let's jump into the practical example to understand how to perform this two-way ANOVA in Microsoft Excel. This is an example. A study compared experienced and inexperienced drivers on three different types of roads. The two factors are, the first one is driving experience. 8 inexperienced drivers and 8 experienced drivers took part in this study. The two labels were coded as experience is equal to 1 and inexperience is equal to 0. The second factor is road type. That means each driver has done the driving on each of these road types. The three labels were coded as first class road is equal to 1, second class road is equal to 2 and dirt row is equal to 3. That also you can see into this picture. The first picture is talking about the first class road. The second picture is talking about the second class road. And the third picture is talking about the third road. In this study, a tester recorded the number of steering corrections each driver made on each type of the road. The response variable here is corrects. That means number of corrections each driver has made. Now before to perform the two-way ANOVA in Microsoft Excel, the first step is we need to identify what is a null hypothesis and what is the alternative hypothesis in our example. So what is a null hypothesis here? The null hypothesis can be a zero colon mean of road one is equal to mean of road two is equal to mean of road three. That means number of corrections on each of the road types are equal. Or we can also say a zero colon mu one is equal to mu two is equal to mu three. That means the number of corrections will be same for all road types. There will be the second null hypothesis if we consider the second factor that is experience of the drivers. In this situation, the null hypothesis will be H0 colon mean of inexperience is equal to mean of experience. Or we can say H0 colon mu i is equal to mu e. That means the number of corrections will be same for experienced as well as inexperienced drivers. 
And what will be the alternative hypothesis in this case? Yes, H1 colon any one of the bin is different. Now let's go to the Microsoft Excel and see how we can perform the two-way ANOVA with this example. Here we can see there is a data collected by the tester that consists of three important columns. The first one is about the experience of the drivers. Here zero indicates that drivers has no experience or in other words we can say zero is indicating inexperienced drivers. Whereas the second one is indicated by the coded one. The meaning of one is the experienced drivers. We can also see into the second column there is a road type which consists of the road conditions 1, 2 and 3 which is equivalent to first class road, second class road and the dirt road. And into the third column we are having corrects that means number of corrections the driver has made for the combination of experience and road type. Now if you look at this data we cannot perform the two-way ANOVA on this data. To perform the two-way ANOVA in Microsoft Excel, we need to rearrange the data in the format that Microsoft Excel can perform two-way ANOVA on that. Now, what is that arrangement? We need to add one of the factor in rows and other factor into the columns. Here we can see I have added one factor into the columns and the second factor into the rows. Now, let's add row 1 into the column B row 2 into the column C and row 3 into the column D. Let's note down all the observations for the inexperienced driver first and then for the experienced drivers. For each of these combinations, what are the number of corrections that driver has made we need to make a note of it. For example, for the road 1 and the inexperienced driver, the number of corrections are 4. So in similar way, we need to copy this entire data from the raw data into this another format. Once we formulate entire data into this new format, now we can perform the two-way ANOVA on this data. Now to perform the two-way ANOVA in Microsoft Excel, please follow the procedure. Go to the data, then go to the data analysis. Here we need to select the option of ANOVA two-factor with replication. Why we are using the two factors? Because we are having two factors in the study road conditions and experience of the drivers and why we are using the option with replication because we are having the number of repeated observations for the combination of road types and experience of the drivers. So select this option ANOVA two factor with replication and then click OK. Here we need to mention what is the input range. Click on this arrow and select the entire data which consists of experience, road type and the number of corrects, the entire thing. Then make enter. In rows per sample, we need to add number of rows that we are having per sample. We can see here how many number of rows we are having. 1, 2, 3 and 4. So add here as a 4. By default, the alpha value here is a 0 0.05. So keep that default value as it is. Once we enter all input here, then we are having an option for the output. We can have the output range anywhere into the same worksheet. We can have the output into the new worksheet ply or into the new workbook. By default, it is a new worksheet ply. So keep the default selection as it is and then click OK. So once you click the OK, we will get the results for ANOVA two factor with replication. This is a very beautiful results because here we can see we are having the summary for no experience for all these road 1, road 2 and road 3, experience for road 1, road 2 and road 3 as well as total for road 1, road 2 and road 3. Now let's understand the interpretation of these results in detail. For easy understanding I have just highlighted the portion which is very important. Here we can see we got the results for ANOVA two factor with replication. This consists of two important parts. The first one is summary and the second one is ANOVA table. In summary, we can see what will be the count, sum, average and variance for each of these combinations of the factors. In the first section, we can see what will be the outcome for no experienced drivers and the road conditions. That means for the combination of inexperienced drivers and the road one, we are having four number of observations. The sum of all these number of corrects are 40. 
the average are 10 and the variance is 34.6667. In similar way, for the combinations of road 2 and inexperienced drivers, we can see the number of observations are 4, sun is 72, average is 18 and the variance is 22.6667. And for the road 3 along with inexperienced drivers, we are having the number of counts as 4, sum is 80, average is 20 and the variance is 36.6667. If you can see the total, we are having the total number of observations for the combination of inexperienced drivers and the road conditions. There are 12 number of observations. Sum of all these observations is 192, average is 16 and the variance is 46. In similar way, we are also having the summary for experienced drivers and road conditions. We can see we are getting the average of 7.5, 7 and 15 for each of the roads for the experienced drivers. And we will also get the same statistics for the total. That means combination of both experienced and inexperienced drivers for the road 1, road 2 and road 3. That means for both inexperienced and experienced drivers along with all road conditions, we are having the number of corrections for the road 1 are 70 for road 2 are 100 and for road 3 are 140. The average time taken by the driver for each of these road is 8.75, 12.5 and 17.5. This is the entire summary for the combination of two factors and what is the result that we are getting. Now we are interested here whether any one of the mean out of these is a different or not. For that purpose we need to go into the second part which is the ANOVA. In that we can see the first column is about the source of variation. We can have the source of variation from sample. In other words we can say it is about the driver experiences. And the second is about the columns. It is about the road types. Third is about the interaction of both of these sample and column or driver experience and road type. And the last one is about the within or we can say it's for the error. The second column is about the sum of squares. The third column is about the degrees of freedom. I have explained these degrees of freedom in very detail into the regression analysis that you can go there and you can learn in detail. Here just for understanding I am going to explain degrees of freedom are nothing but the number of independent comparisons that we are having and that is always equal to minus one of all the observations that we are having. That means if you see the total degrees of freedom that will be total number of observations minus one. As we are having total number of observations 24, 24 minus one. So we are having the total degrees of freedom as 23. For the driver experiences, we are having two levels. One is inexperienced drivers and the second one is experienced drivers. So we are having the two levels. So degrees of freedom will be 2 minus 1 which is equal to 1 for the driver experiences. For the road types, we are having three road conditions. First class road, second class road and dirt road. So the degrees of freedom will be 3 minus 1 which will be equal to 2. For the interactions, there will be the multiplication of degrees of freedom for samples and columns. So that is coming as 1 into 2 which is equal to 2. And the next one is within. That means all the remaining degrees of freedom will be assigned to this within term. Now, if you are having the more degrees of freedom for this within term, the accuracy of the model is very high. That's why we need to ensure that the degrees of freedom for this within term must be very high. And here, 18 is indicating that we are having the very high degrees of freedom for this within term. The next column is mean of squares. So this is simply the ratio of sum of squares and the degrees of freedom. The next column is about the F. This is also called as F calculated. This is simply the ratio of mean of squares for each of the term divided by mean of squares for the error term. That means if you are going to calculate the F calculated for the driver experience, that will be the ratio of mean of squares for the driver experience divided by the mean of squares for the error term. Similarly, the F calculated for the road type will be equal to mean of squares for the road types divided by mean of squares for the error term. And for the interaction again, it will be mean of squares for the interaction divided by mean of squares for the error term. Once we got all these F calculated, then we need to compare them with respect to the F critical. In this analysis, F critical will be auto calculated by the Excel, but 
If you want to learn in detail how to calculate the F critical, please watch the detailed video on one way ANOVA. I have explained how to calculate the F critical there in very detail. After that, we need to compare this F calculated with respect to the F critical. And by these two comparisons, we will get the value which is called as a P value. You might be remember that we had taken the value for alpha as 0 0.05. That 0 0.05 is nothing but the significance level. If this p value is less than the significance level of 0 0.05, then we can say that the factor is significant. Here we can see both driver experience and road type are having the p value less than 0 0.05. So both driver experience and road type are the significant factors. In other words, we can say the number of corrections are depending on both driver experience and road type. To make our results more apparent and that anyone can understand, we can also perform the box plot on this data and we can see what are the results that we are getting. Before to perform the box plot, let's fill these empty cells by no experience and experienced drivers. Once we enter the data here, now let's perform the box plot. Please follow the procedure. Go to the insert tab. In insert tab, we need to select the charts option. In charts option, we can see there is a symbol for the histogram. Click on that and there you will get the option for box and whisker plot. So we need to select this option box and whisker. Click on that. Once we select this option, then we will get the beautiful box plot here. This box plot consists of the number of corrections for both no experienced drivers and experienced drivers for all three types of roads. To make results more easily understandable, please click on this plus sign and add the legend here. Once we select this legend option, we can see the results is very apparent now. We can also add the chart title here, box plot for corrects. So here we can see we are getting the very beautiful results. By comparison of these two box plots, we can see inexperienced drivers are doing more number of corrections compared to the experienced drivers. Let's see for the road one. So these are the number of corrections. We can see the variation is also more for the no experienced drivers and also the number of corrections are more. If you click on the road two again, we can see the number of corrections are more by the inexperienced driver and same is for the road 3. Boxplot is a very powerful tool if you want to study the results for the combination of these factors. I am sure with this example and the detailed procedure, you might have got the complete clarity about the 2 way ANOVA. We will continue this journey into the next video and in the next video again I am going to explain one of the important tools that we can perform into the Microsoft Excel by using the data analysis tab. At the end of this video, if you found this information useful, then please do not forget to like, comment and subscribe. If you want to learn Lean Six Sigma and Minitab most effectively and practically, then please visit at vijayasabe.co slash join or successfulcareerhub.com slash courses. One more important thing, if you want to support me or appreciate my efforts, you can also join my YouTube channel by clicking the join button at my YouTube channel. By joining this YouTube channel, you are not only supporting me, but also getting an access to the perks that can help you in your career goal. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.